Hey, what's up everybody? Pathlin here and I just realized I got the wrong lights on, but it's all good because sometimes you got to start something even if you have no idea what you're doing just to see what it's like and you can make corrections along the way. So I'm going to change the lights during the intro, but I'm here to tell you that we're going to be focusing on Clubhouse today, the brand new social media app that's taken the social media world by storm and it is available on iOS right now. It'll likely be available on Android at some point in the near future, but I've been experimenting with it. I've been enjoying it actually. And it's interesting because oftentimes these new platforms come around and I'm always later to join. I usually get my username in there and this one's invite only for right now. So it's kind of awkward and weird about how to get in, but I mean, we'll all eventually be on it. Um, and I'm not here to say you gotta be on it, but I definitely wanna be uh, somebody who can help you be aware of what it, what it's like, what to look forward to, what to expect, all those sorts of things too. So uh, I appreciate you. Thanks for coming in today. We're going to have some fun. I'm actually going to demonstrate what's on my phone. On like that. There we go. You should be able to see what's on my phone right now, uh, which is kind of cool. So we'll make sure that's all working and I'll take you in. Uh, there's some rules about recording on Clubhouse, which will change how I do this because I'm not going to go into other rooms that exist because you need to, right now you can't record on Clubhouse and you're not allowed to record those conversations unless you have permission from the speaker. So I'm going to create my room and um, I'm going to kind of just see what happens. So yeah, we'll do that. Everyone is giving away a, what is that Bill said? A free iPhone today. Okay, sorry, that was loud. I don't know where that system audio came from, but it should be working now. Sorry about that. Uh, let me know if that's muted. But anyway, let me get the intro going, fix the lights, and we'll go from here. This was this is a very uh, technical, more presentation today. So I apologize for all the issues, but uh, let's move forward. Here we go. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. All right. And then I got to play the other part of the stream. There we go. All right, man. So Jen just said, I just got on Clubhouse. Uh, almost without the 12th, uh -huh. What's up, everyone? What's up, Steph? Great to see you. Being iPhone and I think going to a recording device. Yeah, actually, when you go on Clubhouse, uh, it should, if I go into another room, it'll actually say, hey, you can't record this without the people's permission. So again, I'm going to be starting the room on my own. And uh, let's see. So Clubhouse, what is it? How does it work? It's a really interesting brand new platform that just came out that's audio only. So you don't have to worry about cameras and anything like that. And the beauty about audio is the idea that you can kind of absorb this information on the go and be anywhere. I remember I was, um, I remember that I was at Ralph's, which is a grocery store here. And I was on a clubhouse just listening. And what's cool about these rooms is you're not just listening to other people. You also have the ability to create your own room you have the ability to get invited up to the stage because every room that you'll see has essentially two parts. There's the part at the top that has the speakers, if you will. Uh, there's moderators and other people that people might invite on the stage with you. And then there's the attendees, people who can't talk. They can raise their hand if you allow them to, but for the most part, they're just there to listen and they can leave quietly if they'd like. And it's really cool because there's a built-in sort of viral system on people finding each other based on interests, based on connections on Twitter, Instagram. It's definitely something that you definitely want to connect your Twitter and Instagram to once you're in there. And the cool thing about it is, again, it allows you to connect. And I want you to imagine going to a real life conference, right? And maybe you show up late. And so conference is going, there's breakout rooms all throughout the, the, the convention center. And you just are kind of walking down the hallway. And that's actually what the, the middle part of the, uh, or the, the homepage of the clubhouse is called. It's the hallway. And you're walking down the hallway, you see a room and you see the title of the room. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to walk in. And you go in and it's not like you're waiting for anything. It's literally happening in real time. And like in real life, you're walking into the room, you sit down at the back of the room, and you're just kind of listening. 
And there might come a point where you get to raise your hand and the person who's up on stage or the people in the panel who's up on stage talking about something, they might go, oh, Jim, come in. You can come in and do you have a question for everybody? And it's like they're passing around the mic to you. So it's actually really cool how it works. But again, I wanna show you how uh, this is on the inside. So I'm actually gonna just go in right now and walk you through some of this. So let's go to the phone. Hopefully, I believe you can still hear me. And I'm gonna click on Clubhouse here, which is above my Discord on the bottom right. And so here is Clubhouse. So this is the hallway, right? And I can see different things that people have scheduled who I'm already following. For example, at one o'clock today, I see that Amy Porterfield is actually gonna be talking with a few people. Uh, Tiffany and Amy and, and a few others are there who are gonna be talking about strategies. And I can share this and I can enter this room after it goes live, which is really neat. Now, if I scroll up and down here, I can see there's faces of 518. I don't know why I have that one pointed to me. There's an algorithm and they show me certain things I can explore more as well. But there is the top one here says, need money, come practice your pitch on millionaires. And there's 325 people in that room right now, as we can see, 34 people with the little dot, 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 uh, sort of quote bubble. What that means is that there's that many people on the stage, essentially. Now, the one thing I've learned about Clubhouse is that there needs to be somebody in charge. And if there's somebody in charge, that's great because they can go, oh, you, you talk and they can direct the conversation and such. I've been in a couple of rooms where it's just like everybody's talking over each other and it becomes that awkward sort of Zoom call like, hey, hey, oh, no, I'm sorry, you go. And that's been the case a few times. But the best rooms I've been in are the ones that people start where it's very clear that they're leading the conversation, just like a, a panel on somebody sort of leading the panel and saying, OK, well, can you speak to that? OK, can you speak to that? OK, here's a question from Jim. Karen, can you take that one? And those are the rooms that oftentimes feel very, very professional and there's a lot of value in there, right? So let's go back in here and show you. Um, all daydreaming. So I can see there's 55 in that one, one person on the stage, Hyla. Um, and it's pretty cool because I can actually go here and show you my profile. 12,368 followers. I've only been in like three rooms so far to really have discussions, but I'll tell you, the one piece of feedback that I've seen other people share about Clubhouse is this. Sometimes I'll see people who come up on the stage to ask a question. They go, wow, thank you so much. I can't believe, like, I was here for six hours straight listening all the way through, and I just lost track of time. And whenever you hear feedback like that about something, it's definitely worth paying attention to. Number one, so that you can, if you get involved in something like this, can control your time because it is a time suck. It's very, very interactive, and it's very engaging for sure. Um, it's like a podcast, but in real time. And the other cool thing is as a creator, when you create a room or you get involved in a room, uh, you can actually hold people's attention for quite a long time. So I've been invited to a couple rooms and I've been invited up on the stage to speak. I've been in rooms as just a listener and that's been neat. And I've also started my own room the other day and that was a really interesting experience too. So I'm gonna start a room for you in a little bit here so we can kind of go through this. And I believe I have it set up so that I can actually still engage with people in that room while engaging with you too. And if any of you have any experience with Clubhouse as well and you wanna share your tips along the way, feel free to do that in the chat as well. And again, thank you for coming in. So let's go in here and you can see my profile. You can actually fit quite a bit of stuff in here, right? So I have founder, you know, author, all this sort of stuff. And then I have, well, why am I here? And this is just bio 101, right? Like what can you do for others, right? I'm here to help you grow your business and live your best life. Join me and then I have a little call to action here. Join me on January 19th for a free podcast launch and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay, <laughs> I'm getting messages. So Chris Ducker was the one who nominated me, whoever invites you. And if you come in, you get to see that here, which is pretty cool. And then it connects your uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram account here too. If I go to settings, I can have different things like pausing notifications. I uh, have four interests that I'm into here. You can see all the different things that you can click on. I have small business, stocks, entrepreneurship. What else do I have? gaming but i mean i could put podcasts in here as well and and i guess that's good for now so now it's switched to five and yeah so that's the bio and you can put your picture there whatever you want just like normal so there's a few things here number one there is this bell notification icon and this tells you who of your friends has actually either started a room recently or who has just signed up so you can follow them. So I see, for example, that Greg Mercer from um, from Amazon Jungle 
um, Jungle Scout uh, followed uh, has come on Clubhouse. So I'm going to click on follow, and now that goes away. And there's a few other people here. And I go through these every once in a while to see who has come on. Rich Brooks, what's up, Rich? And, you know, I should probably add everybody. And the more people you're connected to, the more people that will actually uh, – see your profile too because their friends are going to try to connect with each other and all that stuff and that that's pretty cool too so additionally i can hit the search bu uh, button here at the upper left hand corner and i can find specific people and find clubs right so if i were to go here and go podcasting clubs are like groups that exist within this space and you can see the little house icon there the little house icon means this is sort of a club that a person has created that has people who follow this club. And anytime this club essentially goes live, whether it's uh, the person who founded the club or anybody else who has permission and is a moderator, then it'll send notifications out. And you can see podcast secrets revealed, 3,002 members. I'm gonna click on that one and I can follow this. So I can see when this goes live every time. And it's pretty cool. And I can see exactly who's here and who's a member. I can follow them as well. And this is, I guess, the equivalent of groups on Facebook, right? But again, this is audio only which is really cool. I can look up, uh, let's see, business. I can spell. And 871 members here for female entrepreneurs. So likely I'm not gonna be joining this one, although you can get a sense of, again, anytime that there are groups, it allows you to have the ability to connect with people like that. And so this, this, is, this is what I found to be the most useful thing. This is a great place for research to see what groups are out there, to connect with other audience members, to find your niche. Your niches are maybe here. Now, I will say currently that this is very, very heavy on the business and um, sort of, I mean, there are many interests here now, but I think it started in the Silicon Valley business startup entrepreneurial community, and it's like spreading out now, which is great. And there's a lot of people that talk about all different kinds of things now. I saw a conversation yesterday that, was, that had uh, 500 people in the room talking about James Harden and his trade from the Rockets to the Nets. And there were like legit basketball players in there who were in there too, which is pretty cool. And I was listening to them and, you know, there was probably no chance that I could get up on the stage, but I could raise my hand and ask a question. But there were also 500 people in the room, which was pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I saw yesterday was uh, Mr. Beast was on there. Mr. Beast was on and he was there with Daryl Eves from Vid Summit and they were just chatting about YouTube strategies and such. And that was really, really amazing to hear Mr. Beast in real time and people were coming up to the stage asking questions. How do you grow your channel so big, so quickly? How did Mr. Beast Burger come into play? And just fascinating, again, real time stuff and it's not edited and it was it was pretty awesome just to kind of, you know, get in his head for a little bit. And I was doing the dishes and, and stuff during that time. So I, I wasn't wanting to talk anyway and I just had the ability to sort of listen, which is pretty cool. And he had about a thousand people in the room listening at the time. And it's interesting because currently I still have more followers than him, but it's gonna get crazy for him, I'm sure, which is which is pretty cool. So coming back here into the app, again, you can find conversations about certain things. Let's find conversations about hustle and then you can see what uh, clubs exist and all that kind of stuff, which is pretty cool. But what I wanna do is eventually get to the point where I wanna show you how to start a room. If I clicked on here, this also shows me who else is sort of on right now, who I could potentially create a room with. You can actually create uh, rooms with other people too, which is pretty cool. What's up, Polish Rob? Good to see you in the house. Thanks everybody for coming in. We're talking about a new app called Clubhouse right now. And I think if I pop, if I, can I pop in myself in the bottom right hand corner? Let's see. I should be able to do that. Here? No, not like that. Sorry, hold on. No, is that not coming through? Okay. I'm just experimenting. No, that's not working. Okay, well anyway. Okay, so we're on the phone and we're looking at people who I'm connected with who are on the app right now who I could uh, start a room with. Now again, I'm not gonna go into these rooms because we're not allowed to broadcast or record these things without permission. And of course, I'm here doing a live stream. Um, you're not supposed to record conversations without the permission from the owner and there is no built-in recording system right now. It's very purposeful because they want people to not feel like they can get this later. There is scarcity involved. Oh, this is happening right now. And you have to listen to it because it's going to go away, right? But I can start my own room and I'm going to give myself permission to record this and broadcast this because this is my own room. So let's set up a room here and let's see what happens. Start a room. 
So I can have a specific topic. So here, free to welcome Dr. Isaac Jones. They just signed up for Clubhouse and we'd love for you to walk them in. Can't right now, I'm sorry. So that was somebody who I'm connected with who eventually, or perhaps just signed up. That might be one of you, in fact. And then it just notified me and I could either just kind of, we can start a room together and have a conversation if we wanted to, right? So let's go into the room. And I'm just gonna create a open room. Uh, start a room open to everyone. I wanna add a topic, raising wolves, good idea. Let's see, add a topic. Um, clubhouse strategies for beginners. Strategies, strategies. Set topic, right? And you can schedule things ahead of time as well. If you'd like to do that, you can actually go to the calendar up here, upcoming for you. These are from people who I am connected with and I can see the different conversations that are happening. Again, this is just like the conferences that you go to. Here are the things that are happening and when, which is pretty cool. But I can set up my own room if I wanted to. Event name, uh, I can have it with a co-host if I want, and I can set this up for later and publish it, and then it'll be ready by the time I go live. And when I go live, I can enter the room, people start coming in, and we can go from there. But I just wanna start a room sort of as we go, and I'm going to add a topic, business or a clubhouse, Strategies for strategies. Sorry, 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 sorry. Strategies for newbies. And so what's going to happen, I expect, is that, let's see. Did somebody see something? I'm just looking at the chat here to see what's going on. I, and, and of course, part of my thing is I got to be careful because uh, I think that's where you got the feedback from. I liked the why not women's businesses, Pat, to do. Okay. I bet he saw it too. All right. We're good. We're good. Just making sure I didn't show anything I wasn't supposed to or whatever. Uh, okay. So I'm going to set this as a topic. Clubhouse strategies for newbies. Let's go. So I'm hoping this room goes well. I'm going to click let's go. And what's going to happen is we're going to start a room and we're going to see what happens. Now I'm going to be actively engaging with the clubhouse members here. But I, at the same time, I'll let them know that I'm actually sharing this on my YouTube channel to share these strategies at the same time. So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, EJ says, I have my iPad, so I'm going to see if I get a notification from you. Cool. Let's go. Heads up, sharing recording without the speaker's permission violates the community guidelines and will result in suspension. Thank you. Okay, now I set up this room and I'm the moderator. And currently, there is nobody in here. But as soon as people start coming in, and again, notifications might be going out. You can join the room if you'd like, EJ, if you did see it. And again, because I didn't schedule this ahead of time, it's sort of like abruptly people coming in. We got Spencer coming in. We got Eileen. Great to see you here. Thank you so much for coming in. We got Leela. So we have others in the room now, which is really cool. And for those of you who are coming into Clubhouse right now, uh, mind you, I am actually broadcasting this right now on my YouTube channel. I'm actually doing a live stream and live demonstrating this on video for people on how one might be able to use Clubhouse. So thank you again for coming in. I see Rob, Olivia, Misty, Marie, Jennifer, Kit in the house. Welcome in everybody. Thank you so much for coming in. So uh, we got Dan in the house as well. Dan, do I have your permission to broadcast and share this? Awesome. So um, hopefully, I'm, and I'm, again, I'm not sure if people can hear you, but Dan is one of my friends and an editor, and he's a, a member of the uh, corn team here on YouTube. And again, for people coming in right now, we're going to be talking about a few strategies. This will be a, a, a quick hit room here. But uh, Dan, I know you've been on Clubhouse for a while now. What are some of the most interesting things that you've seen other creators do here to engage their audience and to make the most use out of Clubhouse?
That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of great things that you can do here on Clubhouse. I mean, for me, there, there are so many layers here, right? We can create a room, obviously, and bring our people together, and you're then able to sort of connect with them, right? And I've seen so many great opportunities that happen after Clubhouse rooms go away. People reaching back out, saying, hey, thank you for that. And of course, because Clubhouse is integrated with Twitter, as well as Instagram, people often will follow up with you if you have a lot of great things to say. I've seen specifically marketers come in and promote things that they have and do it in a very eloquent way. I've also been in some rooms that haven't done it so well, but there is a lot of opportunity here. For me, I've also found that just sitting and listening to people talk has been really neat. I've been uh, able to better understand more about the community. I've been better able to more understand the language that they use and the problems that they have. One of my favorite parts about Clubhouse is the ability to have people come in and ask questions. And in my experience, and, and I've written books about this, when you, whenever you have the ability to directly connect with people and ask them what they might need help with or get a sense of what they are struggling with, you're then able to take that and use it in so many different ways. Obviously, you want to answer those questions as they come in, but then you can take an understanding of that and turn it into something that becomes another piece of content or perhaps the motivation to start a video later of that topic or a blog post or a podcast episode. I've also seen a lot of people use Clubhouse to connect with other people to then connect again offline or on a podcast or do a collaboration together. There's so many fun things. And I think that the ability for us to get access is, is really what it's about. And again, for those of you coming in the room now, interestingly enough, and we have, I don't know, about 100 people in the room right now, which is pretty cool. Uh, I see Karma here as well. Um, I'm actually broadcasting this right now on YouTube, and you're not allowed to actually record these things without the speaker's permission. I'm the speaker here. I'm giving myself permission, so we're all good. So I'm actually broadcasting this to about 174 people on YouTube right now, and I'm demonstrating, I'm showing people how to use Clubhouse. Now, as I scroll down here, I can see there's a whole bunch of people here, which is pretty cool. Amrita, Tammy, JJ, Mika, one of my favorite strategies and things to think about here is when you create a room, as much as possible, I mean, you don't want to waste time, obviously, but definitely mention people's names. In Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, he talked about the idea that the most beautiful sound to a person is their own name. So whenever possible, whenever in a live situation, whether you're live on YouTube, and I see people on the YouTube channel right now, Camille, Kit, Stephanie, Michael, what's up? And then I see people here on Clubhouse, Maggie, Nick, Melanie, John, Erica. It provides just the ability for people to realize that this is A, in real time, and two, that there's a connection there, which is really neat. Now, some tips for you if you are going to be hosting your own room. If you are going to be uh, bringing people on the stage, doing it one at a time seems to be the best strategy if you're going to be doing questions. And when you bring a person on, then you can chat with them and you can interact with them and then you can kind of uh, finish with them and move on to somebody else if it's more of a Q&A style type of situation. However, if you are going to be doing a panel, what a panel means is you're gonna bring other moderators on board, other people to speak and to share and to take the microphone and lead the conversation a bit. Then what is really cool is you're gonna have to still manage that conversation, especially once you start to bring multiple people in. I was in a room last night with uh, 15 or 16 people who were essentially on the stage portion of the clubhouse room. And it, 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 for a while, it got a little out of hand, meaning it got to that weird situation like on Zoom where people are talking over each other and such. And, and the best rooms I've been in is when, when there's a very clear leader who's directing conversation, who to speak, all that, all that uh, kind of stuff. Now, unfortunately, for those watching live on YouTube right now, I'm not able to share uh, the audio from the clubhouse and from my phone. It's not going through like I had expected it would, but that's okay. Actually, let me give it one more shot here as we go along. Um, actually, yeah, I think this will work now. Hey, Dan, can I bring you back on to see if, if people can actually hear you now? Um, also, what are some of the favorite rooms that you've been in so far? Well, I mean, that one with Mr. Beast last night was pretty cool. Uh, I know a bunch of people in here were, uh, were at that one. So you never know who you're going to end up in a room with. That's what's pretty crazy about it being so early right now. It's, mm -hmm. You never know who could be in the room or who could just jump in as a speaker and you're having a conversation with. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I was in a room yesterday with Mr. Beast, right? And that was, uh, that was pretty insane. It's just really cool because I love audio. I'm a podcaster. My name is Pat Flynn. For those of you coming in, uh, I've been podcasting for about 10 11 years now and uh what's really amazing is the ability for us to just kind of listen in but in real time uh, i love the passive nature of consumption of audio because i can listen in the car i can listen on the go uh while walking my dog but you know when i can hear in real time how people are feeling how people are thinking that's that's absolutely great um 
the viral nature of growth here is pretty amazing too. The more rooms that you're involved with, and especially when you're on stage, uh, the better. And if you happen to be somebody who's moderating a room, I, I would do those who come up to the stage a favor and, and, and promote them, let them know, uh, let the chat know, let everybody else in the room know to follow that person. The better that you can introduce that person, the more context there is, uh, the more likely it is that's going to serve them as well. And you want to sort of reward people who are coming into your rooms and who are sharing. By the way, you should all follow Dan. Uh, Dan here as well. If you're on Clubhouse, he's a, an amazing editor and has a, a beautiful company that helps people with editing videos. You should check them out. And in, in addition to that, you know, the, um, the, the, the room should have a topic, right? I've seen rooms where it's just like, let's just chat. And those are great too, especially if you connect with similar people. But when there's a topic, it keeps everybody sort of on the same page. And it has people who are thinking about joining a room understand the expectation right, of what's going to be spoken about. Uh, the fact that it's live, however, is really interesting, right? On a podcast, you can expect a person to always start from the beginning of the show or the beginning of the episode. Same thing with a video. People aren't starting the video halfway through. Of course, they're starting in the beginning. But we got to remember that these clubhouse rooms get um, sort of, they percolate in, into people's feeds from the moment they come in or when they go back to the hallway and they start to see what's available to them now. And as a result, they come in the room in the middle of a conversation. You might have just walked into this room right now. And it's really important that if you're leading a room, you, you totally have permission to remind people quite often why they are here and who you are and who they're speaking to. And, and, and that, that's, that's really important for sure. So, you know, I do want to bring uh, some people up on the stage here in a little bit, but we have a good number of people in the room. Again, thank you so much for coming into this room. We're talking about some just basic clubhouse strategies. This is sort of a ad hoc room that I put together. I'm also, by the way, broadcasting this live on YouTube right now to 212 people, which is pretty crazy because they're all sort of watching this in real time. And I know those of you who are on Android aren't able to get access to it right now, or you're waiting for your invite. That's the other thing about this as well. This is invite only. So ask around. I've seen people who have just loads of invites who are just kind of waiting to be out there. And if you're sort of struggling a little bit to get on because you feel like you're missing out, Obviously, if you're in Clubhouse now, I'm preaching in the choir, but if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, just keep asking around. Those invites definitely go, um, you know, a long way. So, hey, I'd love to invite another one of my friends here, Karma. And in order to do that, Karma, I can see here, there's sort of two sections. Uh, you can see who is also followed by the speakers who is in the room. And that's a really interesting thing to Clubhouse, uh, that Clubhouse sort of brings out, right? It just shows that, oh, these people who are in the room are also connected to the speakers and then under them, are the people sort of in the audience. So it's almost like when you're at an event, right? When you're at an event, you see the rooms, you're walking in the hallways, you walk in the room, you see these conversations already happening and you kind of sit in the back because you don't want to create a lot of noise. But then the speaker might know somebody and say, hey, come up, sit and sit up front. I want you to be sort of a little bit closer, which is pretty cool. But I do want to invite Karma up on here. I see that his hand is raised. If you're in the audience, you can have your hand raised to sort of just denote to the moderator or the people on the stage that, um, you know, hey, this person has something to say. Uh, you can, I believe, turn raising hands off. I see, I've seen a lot of people use the raising hands feature as sort of like a voting feature just to kind of get a quick understanding from the room. Like, hey, who here has a podcast? And you see a bunch of hands go up and that's that's pretty cool. But I'm going to click on Karma's name here. Karma Cashflow, you should definitely, definitely check him out. I believe he just came on to um, Clubhouse for the first time because he literally only has eight followers. But that's okay. But I'm going to click on invite to speak. And I'm going to bring Karma up on here because I know he would give me permission to share this and broadcast this live. So Karma is now on the stage, which broadcast. is pretty cool. What's up, Karma? Good to see you. I'm going to click on your name. And I'm actually going to make you a moderator as well, which then gives you control of certain things. So um, when I click make moderator and it says make Karma a moderator, you don't follow him. But are you sure you want to do this? So first of all, that just means I should follow you. So yes, I'm going to make you a moderator. I'm going to click on your name. I'm going to follow you. What's up, Karma? How are you, my friend? Thanks for coming in the room. Good, man. How are you? Can you hear me all right? Uh, we can hear you, although your mic is very, very hot right now. So just keep that in mind. Uh, all right. There you go. That's a little bit better. And uh, so you just being brand new to Clubhouse now, this may be the first time you're moderating a room, which gives you access to the ability to sort of control the room a little bit more, to invite pe other people on the stage, to uh, allow for raising hands or not, which is really interesting. But in your short experience here on Clubhouse, what's been the most neat thing for you, would you say? Well, I mean, for me, yes, this is, I've only been on the platform for 
you know, probably about 20 hours uh, only. And yesterday, I actually spent roughly 10 hours on the platform uh, listening in to different conversations. This is actually the first time that I'm speaking uh, in a room, uh, which is, you know, really, really interesting. But like this morning, I was on a, on a, uh, in a room with people like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Grant Cardone, um, and Tony Robbins. Like mm -hmm. Tony Robbins himself was actually in a room listening. And for a while, you know, people didn't, you know, think that it was really him, but it really was. Like he came on for just a minute uh, to let everybody know that it was him. And just the ability to have uh, the connection with people like Tony Robbins and yourself and, and others is like insane. I've never seen a platform where you could, you know, just be able to speak with everybody and listen in on, on just amazing conversations. I've been listening to conversation after conversation about all different types of topics. Um, and it's just, it's blown me away. And, you know, uh, you know, me, Pat, I'm not a very kind of, I'm not a social butterfly, but uh, so I, I'm not a big Facebook, you know, person or Instagram person or anything like that. But Clubhouse was probably is probably the first platform that I could really get behind. And I really thoroughly enjoy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You know, I heard a number of people who have been on the platform and didn't even realize they had spent seven, eight hours listening in a room. One of the most interesting rooms that I actually saw was a room that was available for, I think, 17 or 18 hours, number one. And the cool thing is when you start a room, if you have other moderators in there, the room will keep going even if you leave. And so that's pretty cool. And I did, I did that over the weekend. I had a, a, a podcasting specific room that I started. And then I had to go to a meeting, but then I handed off the mic to somebody else. Now, as a moderator, you can close the room. That's the other thing that I didn't know until recently is you have the ability to, if you click, I believe, on one of the, uh, the three little dots in the upper right-hand corner of a room that you've created. I'm going to do that right now for the people watching on YouTube. Uh, it says search room, and that gives me the ability to see if I can search for somebody specific who might be in the room so that I can find them and maybe bring them on a stage, uh, have them become a moderator, or I can literally end the room, and then, and then it closes, which is which is pretty pretty cool. Now, for those of you who are just coming in, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, I'm a newbie. I'm a newbie here on Clubhouse, and I'm exploring it with you, and I'm just sort of sharing out loud some of the things that I've learned. Uh, I've done a lot of live stuff before, which is why this is a nice crossover for me. I'm in fact broadcasting this live right now on YouTube. And yes, I did get permission from the speakers here uh, to broadcast this, including myself, obviously, but Karma as well as Dan here. And this is why I'm a little bit less interactive with the chat who's here in Clubhouse right now because um, this is being broadcasted. So I'm just very aware of that. But uh, what's amazing is, again, I've heard people just lose their time here. And anytime I've heard people say that they've lost their time or they forgot or they just got uh, sucked into something like this, that's a good sign that, okay, maybe this is something that I should pay attention to. Is Clubhouse something we should be focusing all of our time and effort into? I don't know. Not yet. Typically, when I say, you know, you got to get on social media because if you're not shared, you're not being seen, those kinds of things. I'm also very careful because a lot of times things that are new are very hyped up. A lot of big players come on. I feel this FOMO, right? And if you're feeling a little a bit of FOMO, especially those of you on YouTube who perhaps don't have your invite yet or anything like that, I mean, eventually you'll get on the platform and by then who knows it, there might be a lot more information about whether or not this thing is actually useful or not. But for me, it's useful because of connection, because of access. It actually has turned into some business already. People who found me in the podcasting chat the other day, a couple of them become, have become students already and have paid me money as a result of getting a sense of what it's like to learn from me and then wanting to go deeper and take uh, one of my programs, which is pretty neat. But the other thing I love about this, and I mentioned this earlier, but it was the idea of research, right? If you can create a room and you can bring people on a stage, you can have a better and direct connection with your audience. Now, in my book, Will It Fly? I talk about the idea of having conversations with your audience. And unfortunately, there's a lot of friction to be able to do that. Where do these people exist? How do I even reach out to them? How do I even get them comfortable to talk about certain things with me? And this is what I feel the beauty of Clubhouse is, the idea that I can set up a room about a particular topic. Maybe it's a topic that I want to explore for a course or a book or a program or just I just want to connect with other people about that thing. Well, then I can attract those people. And this becomes essentially a stage or an area where I can actually do a lot of research. And by research, I mean asking questions like, what are you struggling with right now? What do you need? But also paying attention to the words that they use. And this is why I love this 
more than say, for example, a survey. A survey might be great for understanding more about your audience too, but then you have the worry that number one, obviously it's a survey, so it's kind of anonymous, but also at the same time, there's this idea that there's a, there's a, there's a level of connection missing because it was just a survey, right? Whether it's anonymous or even if you do know the person's name, you choose from a, a bunch of numbers, you choose from a slider to show how much you need help on something. It's like, there's, there's no personality, there's no emotion, it's hard to empathize with people. But here on Clubhouse, you actually get to hear people's voices. And that's really amazing. And um, let's see, I see a, a good friend of mine here in the room right now. Her name's Kim, and this is on Clubhouse. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, uh, you can see this as well. Um, Kim, who is a live video expert, I'm, I'm, I'm so, so curious, Kim, if you happen to uh, want to come on and uh, come on the stage and, and chat a little bit about your experience here on Clubhouse as somebody who's very proficient in live video, I'd love to get your take on live audio and how it's feeling to you. So uh, I, I will tell you that I am broadcasting this on YouTube. So I'd love to first ask you for permission to broadcast this, uh, if that's okay, to fall within the guidelines. But I see you raise your hand. I'm going to invite you to speak. And Kim, it's been so long since we've connected and how beautiful that, although we can't see each other at conferences like we normally do, here we are on Clubhouse now, actually being able to chat with each other. So Kim, uh, before I say hello, just do you have, or do I have your permission to share this and broadcast this? Absolutely, absolutely. Kim, welcome in. It's so good to connect with you. How are you? How are things uh, in your end of the world? It is so good to connect with you and hear your voice and see you on Clubhouse. Um, uh, things are fine in my um, in my world. And how about yourself? Uh, things are great. You know, just exploring new things, new year, new goals, new fun things to look forward to. Um, you know, you should all follow Kim. She's an amazing personality. Somebody so easy to connect with, has a lot of information, especially about live video. Um, and, and Kim, I just want to ask you really quick, what's your take on Clubhouse? And now that there's no video, what, what are the applications for this? How have you used it? Um, what, what are things that we, especially as people who want to grow followings, grow uh, a brand, um, how do we best utilize this platform in your mind? Ooh, that's a good question. And um, like you, I'm new. Um, I, I feel like we are all new, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the platform is not, uh, or the app is not um, old enough really to, I guess, to, to have uh, super experienced folks. But um, I've been playing around with it, honestly. And, and sounds like very similar to you. Mm. Uh, just uh, dipping my toe in a little bit, seeing what, uh, what the community is like, which uh, on that from that perspective, I'm just like, wow. I mean, I will say that. I'm super wowed by the connections and the ability to connect with people and, and reconnect with people. Like, you know, even though we haven't spoken to because of everything that's happening, you don't see people, you know, in the normal course of, you know, speaking at an event or just normal course of life. So just reconnecting with people has been amazing. Um, and the, the ability to hear the voice, I think that is, something that I'm very um, excited about. Even with live video, um, it's still a one-way channel, right? Unless we have a guest. And um, with this, uh, the ability to really connect and hear uh, our audience's voice is really, really intriguing to me. And I'm loving that aspect um, where, you know, if you're, I know you're doing a phenomenal job on YouTube. I've been stalking some of your YouTube videos. Um, uh, but still, there's, there's, even though you're communicating with your audience and you can answer questions and things like that, it's not like you can hear their voice, right? Mm -hmm. um, so from that perspective, I think it's super clever. I, like you, I have, I have uh, been able to generate a little bit of business so far with um, not a whole lot of intention. I mean, it's been just purely sharing um, information and being open to you know, giving everything that I know that, you know, in the context of the conversation. Um, so I'm, I'm in this place where I'm not quite sure, you know, how I'm going to proceed personally with it. And more importantly, how we can really leverage it consistently, smartly um, in our businesses without being a time suck. Yeah, I mean, that's that that's the trick right there. And uh, again, how crazy that the first time we've connected in a long time because of the pandemic and not being able to see each other in person. Here we are in Clubhouse. Like this is the kind of cool thing 
that can happen. And like you said, hearing the voice, hearing the real time conversation and the ability to bring people up on the stage and have a chat with them, whether they're a friend or somebody who you don't know who you want to help and serve through Q&A is really, really interesting. I think that for me, I, 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 my, my approach to Clubhouse is, you know, I'm very aware of my time. You know, I'm a father and I have a business owner. I have several companies I advise and there's only so much time in the day. And then here comes this new giant thing called the Clubhouse that everybody's talking about. I mean, for me, I'm very, very tempted to just, you know, spend all day on it, right? And learn everything I can. But at the same time, I have other obligations and things to take care of. So the beauty of Clubhouse is during passive moments of consumption, for example, while in the car or while doing a workout or while walking the dog or something, like I can still engage and I can still you know, be a part of it, or at least listen in. And there's some amazing conversations that are happening all the time here, which is really great. But at the same time, I also want to control and have sort of a container or, or a boundary around this. And of course, we're talking about work life balance here and, and time and such. And, and for me, one thing I like to implement with anything that's kind of new is something I like to call the the 20% itch rule. And this, this is something that I've sort of adopted from uh, people like Gary V, Ramit Sethi, even companies like Google. Uh, they often say that, you know, they'll spend just a little, they have like actually time set aside to play around, to try new things, to experiment. Uh, Ramit says he takes every Friday, Ramit Sethi from I Will Teach You To Be Rich. He says, you know, every Friday is just kind of my day to explore new things and it's contained because I have other obligations and things I need to focus on. But I'm also curious and I want to stay ahead on things that might be new. Gary Vaynerchuk says the same thing. He's basically on all the social media platforms, right? He was even talking a lot about musically or music. The, the, the one that eventually became TikTok. Um, and he was really early on that because he used a little bit of his time to explore brand new platforms. And then of course it's now exploded. And Google, they say that they allow their employees 20% of their time to try you know uh, something new or develop just kind of random projects that can then be inserted into the business in one way or another. And a lot of things we use like Gmail have been a part of that. Uh, for me, I'm reserving a little bit of time each day to be on Clubhouse because to me, it is worth the potential of it going away. Uh, there's a lot more upside potential than downside, in my opinion, of just investing a little bit of time to explore it. And, and of course, with that exploration, and I'm showing this on YouTube right now, I do have 12,427 followers, which is pretty crazy. And I haven't even been that active on it. And I think that's another beauty. Uh, another beautiful thing about this is that Clubhouse has done a really good job of creating the engine behind the growth. Uh, and of course, they have, you know, they're marketers, they know what, what they're doing, they have, you know, strategies for the invitations, and it feels very Facebook like, in terms of how it's kind of rolling out, right? Oh, like this university has it, when's it going to come here? Yay, it's here now, let's get the invite. And let's just invite our friends and stuff, which is pretty crazy. So the room now I'm scrolling down on YouTube is, is growing, there's a lot of people coming in coming out. That's that's also one of my favorite things about this is, you can enter a room and just kind of like leave quietly. Like it's even it's it's even better than in real life. Like when you go to a room, you sit down, and then you have to get up and leave because you're you just aren't feeling it or whatever. You got to get up, and it makes noise and commotion, and you know people's got to tuck their knees in to get out and like whatever. Like this is so cool because it's just online, and and you don't have to talk to anybody. That's the cool thing. I wonder. I it would be cur I'd be curious to see how many people who are here or just in Clubhouse in general are active and they're talking and they're speaking versus. You know, just sitting and listening. And I would imagine that most people here are potentially, you know, more on the introverted side and just who just want to soak it all in, which is, uh, which is really cool. So again, for those watching on YouTube right now, thank you. And again, I do have permission from the people who have been speaking here today to broadcast this because it's being recorded and broadcasted live to 218 people right now on my YouTube channel at Pat Flynn. Uh, here, again, my name is Pat Flynn. I'm an entrepreneur, father, husband out of San Diego, California. And, um, you know, business to me is the ability for us to serve people. And when you can automate that, when you can scale that, the better. And that then opens up more things for your own life too. And today we're exploring Clubhouse and talking about some newbie strategies as well. Um, Kim, uh, one more question for you. As somebody who's done a lot of lives, who also has to engage with an audience who's just watching, I would imagine that a lot of those strategies are very similar here on Clubhouse. How, how does one who is leading a conversation like this engage an audience like uh, who's watching live on YouTube or who might be, you know, watching or listening on, on Clubhouse. What, what are some strategies that we can do to keep people interested in sticking around? Oh, such a great question. And I'm going to probably give some newbie answers <laughs> yeah, <that's all right. laughs> because I, like I say, I'm just, I'm just learning this platform too. 
So there's a couple of things, like if you invite someone up on um, on the stage, quote unquote, uh, if uh, you tap your audio button um, to, it's kind of like a pause. So if, if one of the other speakers is speaking and you're like, yes, say it, you know, like, Woo, I love it, I love it then just tap the little um, audio button and it will give like it's clapping, you know, it's applause. And from a, from the standpoint of, you know, engaging other people, um, one thing is just letting people know the process and articulating. And I think it's important because we're all new. So we're like, okay. So they say, raise your hand. Well, how do you raise your hand? Well, if you go down, you know, in the left hand, uh, right hand corner, there's a little hand. And, you know, you tap on that if you would like um, to uh, the one of the moderators to see you and potentially bring you on stage and let you um, ask a question or be a part of the conversation. Um, you know, giving people the instructions on how to do some of this stuff. I think that's important. Um, I think it's super important to see people and name them. Like, you know, I'm seeing Lindsay and Meredith and uh, Eileen and Deb and April and Carrie and Spencer and Jennifer and Olivia. And I mean, you can't, obviously, if the room's massive, um, you can't um, necessarily call everybody's name. But, you know, if you can showcase that you're paying attention, that you do see people, I think that's uh, super important. Um, and then, of course, you've already done this. Um, you know, when you uh, pulled me up on stage, if you see somebody that you would like to pull into the conversation that you feel has value, you know, just ask, you know, hey, would you, you know, tip, and again, tell them how they do it, you know, raise your hand and come on in. Um, I, I think those are all great ways to, um, you know, engage. And the other thing I, I learned um, is the reset the room concept, um, <clears throat> which is if you, um, if you're listening, you can, you can basically just tap your screen and pull it down. And it, you know, quote, unquote, resets the room. Um uh, that is, a, a, again, a great way for people to see who's still here, um, not only you, you know, not only the moderators and the speakers, but also, you know, the people in the audience. Um, and in some cases, like I, um, I learned this from Chocolate Johnny, for those of you who know Chocolate Johnny, um, he is, he talks about changing your bio or your, um, your photo on the fly. So if you if you're a speaker or or you're a guest, I mean, you're still in the audience and you have a question, if you created a little a photo of yourself that says, I have a question. And, you know, every time the, the moderators um, reset the room, then your photo is now going to show up with that, I have a question versus your face. Hmm. Uh, and you can change those on the fly in any room you're in. So those are just some things I've learned so far. Hopefully it'll help someone else. And I don't know if that was a great answer or not, <laughs> Pat, but that's kind of a few things that I, I picked up along the way. No, that was fantastic, Kim. Thank you so much. And everybody, make sure to follow Kim. She's amazing, and uh, we're good friends. And I'm just very thankful for uh, us to meet and connect yes. here, right? Like, yes, how crazy okay. is that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I will um, um, be here for a few more minutes like you. I'm trying to be intentional and just come in when I have downtime. Yep. But thank you for inviting me up. And I am so excited we got a chance to reconnect. Yeah, this has been amazing, Kim. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Uh, by the way, when Karma came in earlier, this was about a half hour ago, he had eight followers. And just the fact that he's up here on the stage and had a, a, a small thing to say, um, he's got 33 followers now. So he's increased you know, by 400%, which is uh, pretty dope. And I've seen that, uh, obviously, when you're on stage, you're seen at the top and people are more likely to follow you. All the actions are great here in Clubhouse. You need to continually remind people. Now, obviously, you don't want to do it every minute, but every once in a while, if you feel it's been a while, you might say, hey, make sure to hit that follow button. And, um, you know, I'd love to connect with you more here on Clubhouse and even offline and, and make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. But you have to have a reason to do that. What is it that you have to offer? People don't just follow random people, although I think like with any platform, there's always going to be a follow for follow situation. And, and, and there's a lot of things happening in the under, underside of Clubhouse well to help you grow uh, too, which is pretty cool. The other thing that I've seen Lewis House do, Lewis House, a good friend of mine, School of Greatness podcast, uh, he often will um, remember to tell the chat, like, hey, if you've enjoyed the conversation here, now I don't want you to do this now because we're, we're gonna close the room in about five minutes here and I just wanna have you uh, understand that. But typically, if you're in a room and you're in the middle of the conversation, you know you're gonna still do this for a while, you wanna reach as many people as possible. One thing that you can do is you can tell people to click on the plus sign 
on the bottom right hand corner and you might say it like this hey if you're enjoying this conversation we're about to get into a really deep conversation with so and so about this and if you have some friends who are here on clubhouse who, who you want to make sure see and hear this like click that plus button down there invite your friends in we'll make them feel welcome all that sort of stuff right so that's how you can grow the room from within which is really neat i've also found that and my friend cliff uh, ravenscraft told me this the other day he said that the name that you name the room is so important he named the room the other day just like ask me anything with cliff ravenscraft right or something like that and he had like very few people come in and on the fly he changed the name of the room to something that was more like you know how to live your best life ask me anything with cliff and stephanie and his wife uh and then the room just started to fill up so there's a little bit of copywriting needed i want you to imagine just like a youtube thumbnail right youtube th on youtube you have your thumbnail and you have the title and that's literally all you have to work with to get a person interested here on clubhouse you have the title of your room and the description really and that's that's literally it and so work on that and you can always continue to improve on that of course um i do want to invite a good friend of mine now i see it's interesting there's two aprils on the stage now which is pretty cool and i, I do want to talk to both of you but first i'm going to uh, reach out to april roga here who i know is also watching this live on youtube right now we have about 223 people watching live on youtube in April, as you come in, if you can just tell us that we have permission to record and broadcast this, that'd be great. But uh, April Roga, uh, welcome into the room. Thanks for being here, my friend. Hello, Pat, Karma, Dan, and, and Tim. And Tim doesn't know me personally, but um, I've been in her streams. But oh my goodness, I'm so excited to share with you my excitement of Clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, tell, actually, first um, of all, uh, we, we do have permission to broadcast and share this, right? Is that okay? Yes. Perfect for okay, what are you loving about Clubhouse? How are you using it? So I am not currently, I don't currently have a business. And so my message to anybody that's here in the audience who's just getting started, who's brand new, just exploring how to start a business. I was doing live streaming for five years and I just didn't feel like I was finding my tribe. I didn't, didn't feel like I really had my voice because it, it was more of a broadcast than a conversation. People didn't want to join us on on video. Mm -hmm. And so my husband has this vision for our business and has had it for decades, but we weren't really in alignment with where to take his dream and now my dream because I was still looking for my footing. Here at Clubhouse, because they make it so easy to connect with people and to, to just you know, have conversations even during your day when you're doing dishes or cooking or whatever. Um, it is so much easier to find your voice. The creator has so much control on this platform. And I feel empowered when I start a room to really run that room in my own way with my own style. And I'm finding my confidence here. I'm finding my lane so I just today got a club created for autism parents, moms. Yeah. It's called Autism and Beyond, the Net Friending Way. And I'm so excited about that because, as you know, Pat, I have a child with autism. And so here, like, my tribe is already here. Now I have this club where they they can look up the club name and then be attracted to that just based on a keyword search. I don't have to go out looking for them. I feel like they're they're going to find it and they're going to tell their friends about it. And because we don't have replays on here, you know, it's like if you're not here, you miss out unless, of course, you know, somebody's recording it with permission. But I, I just, the, the, the quality of people I'm finding here is just, it blows my mind. I'm just so excited about it. It's incredible. Thank you. Th thank you, April. And well done on the club. Everybody should follow April uh, right now to go and check her out and everything that's happening over there. Uh, and we're cheering you on on the YouTube channel right now. A lot of your friends are saying hello, and it's great to hear your voice and all that stuff, April. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your experience here. And, and we do have another April in the house who I invited up here. Um, April, uh, go lightly. And I'd love to hear from you a little bit about what it is that you enjoy about the platform, how you're using it. And of course, first, if, if we can just get permission to share your voice on on the YouTube that is being streamed right now, uh, that'd be great. And, and if not, um, no worries. But how are you, April? Yes, you have permission. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Pat, you're awesome. I love your podcast. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I've been kind of using the platform as listening to it like I listen to podcasts. I haven't really 
been talking yet. This is actually the first time I've spoken. Um, I guess my biggest question is, like, how do you use the platform to get stuff together? Like, do you just start your own room or do you start a club? I, I mean, I guess I'm just learning how to use it all. Yeah, no, thank you, uh, April. This is a great question. I mean, a lot of times with these new platforms, we're just like, boom, everything is in your face. It's so overwhelming. Like, where do I even begin? What do I even do? And I think part of it just is understanding that, you know, it might take a bit of time to find your voice here or what it is that you do. I love how you mentioned that you've just been sort of sitting and listening for a while. And it's pretty cool that this is the first time you've been up here. And I would encourage you to do it more and start runes just to kind of explore and see what happens. But um, I, I had mentioned this earlier, and this, it's this idea of finding your people. And April Roga said this earlier. It's like she's now able to create a club here and to attract the kinds of people that she wants to attract. And she had also mentioned something that I think is really key here that I think is beneficial for all of us just as human beings. Because human beings, we're special because of our ability to communicate in the way we do. And Clubhouse is another platform that allows us to communicate in a very different way than on other social media platforms. And something that I found after recording 1,600 episodes of my podcast is that I've just become a better communicator. But the trouble with the podcast is it's oftentimes a one-way conversation or a, a two-way, but then nobody else is listening. There's no audience there. It feels very separated from who it is that you're serving, but there's some skill required to make it feel still uh, relevant. Here on Clubhouse, I mean, there's 100 plus people in the room right now, maybe two, I don't even know how many. Thank you all for coming in, by the way. And it feels like you're literally there because you are. And when we invite people on stage and we chat with them, we can understand what they might need help with. We can learn the language. We can better respond. And we just, in general, become amazing communicators the more often we do this, too. So uh, it, it's, it's pretty cool. K uh, Kathy here on my YouTube channel says there's 187 people in the room, six of which that are on stage, which is really neat. So for, for me, April, the way that I'm approaching it is I just want to connect. And, and literally, that's the goal right now is just to connect. And I think it's really important when you go into something to have a goal. Uh, if your goal is to grow your business, then okay, how might we explore how to do that? Who else is doing just that? And let's follow them. Let's learn. Let's sit, sit down on one of their clubhouse rooms and just see what their call to actions are like. I was sitting in on another clubhouse room with uh, a podcaster named Sean, who is having an event very soon. And every once in a while, every few minutes, he would mention the event or uh, talk about certain people that were going to be there. And he did it in a very eloquent, graceful way. And that was really cool because he's also promoting a business on the outside, but it didn't feel weird or anything like that. And to April's point here, uh, April Roger, I think this is why there's such good quality people on Clubhouse. It's voice. And because of voice, we're not able to just hide behind our keyboards and, uh, you know, spam or troll. Uh, I mean, I, I have been a part of rooms where people have come in and said very political things and they just get kicked out right away. But still, uh, for the most part, the quality of the people are, who are here um, you know, you can expect a great conversation, uh, an attentive audience. And of course, if you're providing value, it can go uh, an extremely long way. So, wow, this has been incredible. So, so to Karma and Dan and Kim and April and, and April, thank you so much for coming on the stage on this experimental room here, which again, I just kind of created ad hoc as I broadcast this, uh, hundreds of people are watching on YouTube right now. So thank you for being part of this experiment with me. And all the speakers here indeed have given me permission just in case there's any confusion there because you cannot record these things right now. The interesting thing is when I got on Clubhouse, my first thought as a podcaster was, ooh, how do I record these things so I can repurpose them, right? And that's my marketing brain going. And I'm actually quite glad that they're not making that easy to do and that they're very strict with how those things are because that's the uniqueness of this platform. It almost feels like you know, a longer version of, uh, of, of Instagram stories where, hey, these things are going to go away. So... Hey, if as long as I can, or you as the room creator can demonstrate that there is useful content coming or that you're talking about things that are relevant, um, it makes people not want to leave because you're not going to be able to listen to this again, which is which is pretty cool. And so uh, for those in the clubhouse room right now, I'm going to shut the room down. I just want to thank you so much. And I appreciate you. I'm going to close the room. And I just want to wish you well and make sure to follow all the amazing speakers up here on the stage. And uh, hopefully you can connect with other amazing people here too. My name's Pat Flynn, here to help you make more money, save more time, and help more people too. I'll see you on YouTube, maybe Instagram, maybe Twitter, wherever. Hope to see you soon. Thank you again. I appreciate you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Pat. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. We, uh, 
we ended the room. And now I can see there's a power of social media room with 721. Uh, I'm not going to click on that right now, but it's cool because you can see sort of people you know at the top of this list here. And then I see other ones and, and other ones. And if I scroll down a little bit more, I can hit explore and, and find some other ones too. I mean, some of them get very niche, right? Like the 29 laws to a seven figure business here. There was one about specifically Atlanta, um, Trump impeachment stuff. I mean, there's, there's so many things, Bitcoin, I've seen a lot of those as well. Uh, anyway, that was super fun. Wow, it's weird to take my headphones off. Uh, chat, thank you so much for today. This was super cool and definitely experimental, but I'm glad I was able to kind of show you in real time instead of just talk about this. So we can see how this platform works. So hopefully that gives you an understanding whether you have access to it already or not. Uh, thankful that the demonstration went well. And thank you to those of you who are here in the YouTube channel who were also on the stage. April, you're amazing. And um, yeah, there it is, Clubhouse. Who knows if it's gonna be around for a long time or maybe not, but it's the thing right now you should be making your own decisions as to whether or not that is something that is worth your time to invest in. Now you know, and that's my job is to help you stay informed. So uh, thank you so much for today. I appreciate you, my friends. And I'm looking forward to connecting with, with you tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're gonna start at, let's see, what is my calendar like tomorrow? We got, we're gonna do a, we're going to do an 8 a.m. stream tomorrow. So it'll be 8 a.m. in the morning, not 9 a.m., 8 a.m. because I have a meeting at 9. Um, but I'll see you tomorrow. And there'll be a waiting room up uh, early in the morning, paplin.com slash the income stream. Thank you so much for today. I appreciate you. I hope this was helpful. Looking forward to connecting soon. And as always, Team Flynn for the win. You're amazing. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fear required. The income stream with that plan. All right. Woo! That went well. Sometimes you just gotta risk it for the biscuit, and the biscuit is nice to us today, and it tastes delicious with all the nice honey all over it. Anyway, I don't know what that means. I'm just very grateful, thankful, stoked on it. Hope you have a great day. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow for Friday. Fun games, prizes, giveaways, etc. Peace out, y'all. Much love. Bruh.